Hey guys, sorry I'm a bit behind schedule, but I've been pretty busy lately and I've been working on a few small collaborations here and there. Don't worry though, I can return to my regular upload frequency in the next week or two, depending on how my schedule looks. Thank you guys for not abandoning me when I'm late to an upload. So now, without further ado, we're gonna jump right into the next debunk. This one might make you a bit angry, at least that's how I felt when I first watched this video, but bear with me. I normally try to avoid clickbait titles. But the title of this is a bit hyperbolic. Let's see what your video title is. Atheists don't have ethics. Wow, wonderful. I mean, I personally don't care if people use clickbait. I'm sure I've done it once or twice in the past. Either way, I don't care. I just want to hear your argument. I'm not actually going to argue that atheists can't have ethics. Only that most of them don't. Well, I mean, if that's your claim, then your title isn't all that clickbaity. But wow, really? Most atheists don't have ethics? That's a pretty bold claim there. Let's see what you got. Conversations between Christians and atheists about social ethics tend to go something like this. I am prepared for this massive straw man you're about to make. First, the Christians say, you can't have a moral society without some ultimate moral authority. And there's a name for that. It's called God. You ultimately can't have ethics in your society without God. Then the atheists say, yes you can. I changed my mind. I'm actually not going to show this portion of the clip because it's like three minutes of conversation between an imaginary Christian and a straw man atheist. If you want to see it for yourself, feel free to watch the original video, which I will link below, of course. But for now, I just can't pause the clip every five seconds and repeat the word straw man like 50 times, so I'm moving on. Alright, just to understand how this works, let's start with something simple and basic. How would your moral philosophy justify the basic idea that killing babies is wrong? I don't think anyone is going to say killing babies isn't wrong. And moral philosophy? Um, because murder is wrong no matter if it's a baby or any other human being? Oh, 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 you didn't mean baby, you meant fetus. Oh, gotcha. And this is the point at which the humanists usually go, and I quote, er, um, er, um. <laughs> And you quote? <laughs> you know what, let me just answer that for you. We're not marching around going like, baby killing is good, kill more babies. We are saying that the woman bearing the child should be the one to have the right to choose. She should have a choice on what to do with her body. If she feels she is incompetent, irresponsible, or if she is still a student, for example, she should have the choice to avoid the pregnancy. It's a woman's right. We are increasing the life quality of women all around the country. People can escape nasty life-altering situations. People are happier. And if you don't agree that people deserve to be happy, then I question your moral philosophy. Because while it is possible in theory for atheists to have ethics, it turns out in practice that most atheists actually don't have ethics. They can, and they don't. Why? We don't have ethics if we don't believe that women should have the right to choose when to have a baby? Also, how could you say that atheists don't have ethics just from their stance on abortion? I mean, surely your ethics are based on more than just one thing, right? Look, ultimately abortion comes down to weighing the pros and cons, the pros being that we can increase the quality of life for women and give them the right on what to do with their body, the con being terminating the embryo or fetus. We pro-choicers are basically just saying that the pros outweigh the cons. Of course we hate killing fetuses, we hate that idea, but we just simply think that the benefits outweigh the costs. That's why many pro-choicers such as myself think there should be some sort of limit. For example, after a certain week, you shouldn't be allowed to abort by choice anymore, because the closer it is to parturition, the greater the cost because the fetus is more developed. See, the whole thing is just weighing the costs and benefits. Meanwhile, as many pro-lifers such as yourself don't even consider both sides. You look at only the cons without taking a glimpse at the pros, and that's what makes me angry. Now, of course, that doesn't apply to all pro-lifers. It usually just applies to pro-lifers who have their decisions impacted by religion, people with extreme conservative values values, for example. Nowhere in the video do you even mention women rights or that banning abortion would lead to a lower quality of life for women. See, it's not because we pro-choicers don't have ethics, it's because we actually have ethics, one that makes us weigh both sides instead of just looking at one. If they did have ethics, then they'd be able to detect that an operation which leaves a crushed skull and a pile of severed human arms and legs on the floor in a pool of blood probably ought to be raising some moral questions. On the floor? <laughs> yeah, um, we don't leave aborted fetuses on the floor in case you haven't noticed. 
Also, the pool of blood is kind of irrelevant since surgeries, <laughs> you know, generally involve some sort of blood. We also don't completely mutilate the body like how you're describing it. You're just playing on emotions right now, and you pro-lifers love using that logical fallacy. I could easily go like, ah, these people don't believe in women rights. They want to suppress women with their abortion bans. Misogyny, misogyny. But no, I don't do that. I don't exaggerate, I don't misrepresent, and I'm not an extreme leftist. Most importantly, I don't argue using emotions. I like to simply present exactly what it is, but if you're going to exaggerate everything to tap into the emotions of the audience, then we can hardly have a proper discussion. Figuring that much out is not hard. It's not hard if there are no benefits to the procedure. Now I understand that there is such a thing as secular pro-life, but I'm betting that most of the people who like it on Facebook and follow it on Twitter are pretty much Catholics. And how do you know most of them are Catholics? I mean, you're just saying that, aren't you? Because if they were mostly composed of atheists, your whole argument of atheists not having ethics would kind of blow out of the water now, wouldn't it? I'll help you out here, buddy. Somewhere between 75 to 85% of atheists are pro-choice. If there are any atheists in the secular pro-life movement, they wouldn't be great in portion. There you go. But that still wouldn't help your argument, since your premise that being pro-choice means you're unethical is wrong. Still, if there are a few secular pro-life individuals out there hearing this and want to go hashtag not all atheists or whatever, then this message really isn't addressed to you guys. This is addressed to all of your morally degenerate secularist scumbag friends. In that case, fucking change your main argument, and your title, because this then wouldn't be about atheists not having ethics, it would be about pro-choicers not having ethics. The concept that killing babies is a bad thing to do would have to be pretty basic to any honest philosophy that claims to base morality on human nature according to your close-minded opinion, but you should probably consider what this would mean for women before making that claim. And I'm not necessarily even talking about from the moment of conception, because, surprise, I'm not a Catholic. Well, in that case, where do you think the line should be drawn? Should we preserve our sperm and eggs and fertilize them all because they all have the potential to become a human being? Or should the line be drawn somewhere else? You should probably make that clear. I'm not talking about a blob of cells formed only days ago here, I'm not talking about stem cell research or whatever, I'm talking about well into the pregnancy, look at a picture and anyone can tell that they're looking at a picture of a baby, babies. We're not talking about blobs of cells from the first trimester here, we're talking about brain, heart, arms and legs, babies. That's why we usually encourage some sort of regulation, a limit if you will. Many states in the US, for example, will ban abortion if the fetus is considered to be independently viable outside the womb, somewhere between 24 to 26 weeks. Some states ban it at 12 weeks, some even ban it when a heartbeat is detected. We're not going around saying that you can abort at any time you want. If it's very late into the pregnancy, I also am against the abortion of that fetus. Besides, the mother would have had so much time to decide whether or not to abort by that time. What I fight for is the right to make that decision to abort early on, and I'm sure many pro-choicers will agree with me. When I make clarifications like that, I can sometimes get a sort of non-committal commitment to the idea that maybe there ought to be some limits on abortion somewhere, yeah, out of some humanists. But the organizations these people support and the politicians they elect year after year advocate no compromise, total abortion on demand at any stage, for any reason, no conditions, no exceptions, and even demand that taxpayer money be used to fund abortion at any stage, for any reason, with no conditions and no exceptions, and want to be able to sue Christian employers and hospitals if they won't start actually providing abortion services. I'm sure there are plenty of people on the extreme left who would advocate such things, which I also find to be ridiculous on some levels. So what, you're okay with pro-choicers who are against late-term abortions then? I hope you also realize that these feminazis don't represent all atheists. They want to deny medical degrees to doctors who won't agree to study how to perform abortions in order to get their degree. Well, that's physically not possible since not all people who get medical degrees go into surgery. So I doubt anyone is actually saying that, but if there is, I honestly wouldn't be surprised. That's not pro-choice. That's pro-abortion. The pro-abortion lobby dominates the political left, and the political left 
dominates the atheist community. No, not really. You might as well retitle your video to Radical Leftists Don't Have Ethics. Now, Christians seem to have figured this out. They've figured out that killing babies is bad. How did they do that? It's not directly addressed in the Bible anywhere. They're not really getting it from the religion itself. So how is it that Christians know about this basic moral precept and atheists don't? Maybe because atheists also recognize it as bad, but we just think the pros outweigh the cons? It's that they have ethics and atheists don't. The only real connection between Christianity and opposition to abortion is that Christianity teaches its adherents to have a strong sense of ethics. That's it. That's the whole connection right there. You know, it's funny how you pro-lifers are so adamant about not killing babies, but as soon as the babies are born, you just don't give a shit. There are plenty of orphaned children right now. They should be the primary concern. Why aren't you speaking out for people to adopt more? Why don't you adopt? We have so many children and babies that need a home, and you suggest we increase that number? It's pretty clear that this isn't about saving lives anymore. Anyway, for the rest of the video, he's basically just repeating the same thing, and there's nothing else to address, so we're done here. Thank you guys for watching, and let me know what you think on abortion in the comment section below. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you next week.